an exciting time for anybody that bounces the ball. Last week of regular season, leading into all the things that everybody starts to talk about. So we'll be ready. And the number one thing we need to be ready for is a long trip to Boise to play Boise State. And you remember, we remember the game here and the way it was played. So we've got two road games, uh, but all that matters is the first one. So I'll let you entertain uh, questions for Jamal if you need them. Jamal, a week ago you got the key games back. Did you think you'd be in this position to be able to win the Mountain West Conference regular season with the title? Um, I knew that we were to get it together. I didn't know that uh, New Mexico was going to lose and they're going to put us in a situation of tie for first. But I knew if our team could just win our games, that a lot of things could happen. And we all look forward to making our season better every day. And after we took uh, three losses in a row, we all had a team meeting, got together, and talked about what we need to do. And we just gained from that and built from it. Uh, they're two long trips, but uh, this is what we we came here for. It's what we have to do to win, and when, it's gonna be a long trip. But we gotta get through this Boise State one, and then we gotta worry about TCU and TCU, and tuck down two of the uh, two of the teams that we're tied with. So we have to go in there and take TCU receivers and also take Boise State receivers because we could have lost to Boise State if that guy would just made that last shot. So we can't take any of these two teams lightly. Um, we feel our weakest spot is rebounding the ball and a little bit of turnovers, but uh, we try to make ourselves better every day. Like coach puts on stuff on the board that we need to work on during the game, what we need to improve in, and we try to improve that every day. Jamal, you, you know, having been through the Mount West season last year, how much did you learn about what it meant in terms of just wear and tear on your body, and how did you prepare yourself over the summer for that? Um, I worked out real hard. I worked out two times. I was still going to see Randy, uh, me and Xavier, Chase, and LeBrafer. Everybody was here in the summer. We all worked out hard. We also had an individual workout where just players come because so, it'd be legal if we had coaches. So we had players work out, mandatory. So we all prepared ourselves for this, and I try to ice bath before every game so make sure my body is feeling 100%. Yeah, whirlpool probably at like probably like forty degrees, thirty-five. So you just make sure your body's just rejuvenated. You're not sore. How long do you do that for? Uh, I stay in there about fifteen, twenty minutes. How, what's that like? Uh, first five minutes is brutal, but after that, you just you just in there like you're in a tub or something. And how long before the game do you do that? Uh, I don't do it right before the game. I do it the day before. So I do it. Make sure I try to get in there every time before the day before. Uh, well, last time we played against Colorado State, we lost the game because we were short of rebounding. So I just wanted to win. So if it took me getting four charges and being Tim Sheldon, I would did four charges and being Tim Sheldon. But um, rebounds just were, like I said, one of our weaknesses. But we're getting for him. We're getting stronger every day and getting better at it. Jamal, how tall are you? I'm 6'5". Um, I don't know. I, I, guess, I guess I just got a knack for the ball. I'm just probably I'm trying to get a knack for a ball like Kawhi. I'm not as great as Kawhi, but uh, I'm getting close to it. Did you learn rebounding from Kawhi? If so, what? Uh, yeah, I learned a lot from rebounding. Guarding, guarding Kawhi all last year, you learn a lot of things, how to get the rebound and just go after the ball and have a knack for the ball. So you figured if you could box out Kawhi, you could box out just about anybody? Yeah, I mean, he's the best at doing it to me. I think he was the best in the country last year getting rebounds. Uh, just work, just work. Putting a lot of time in the gym, shooting them after practice, uh, putting extra hours in the gym, going into the gym when I'm not supposed to be in the gym. So that's pretty much how I think I just got better at it. The more time you put in, the better it can put out. Uh yeah, uh, after the season I knew I had a big role. Coach Fish talked to me after the season and let me know that he's gonna need me to have a big role next year. But me as a freshman backing up a Kawhi Leonard uh, that was a first round draft pick, I have to understand and just learn from that. So my freshman year is pretty much a learning experience, and also I have to I got a learning experience to even try out. I got time to play, so I just have to learn from the best, and now I have opportunity to be one of the best. Do you think you owe a lot to Kawhi for what he taught you and, and banging up against him every day? 
Uh, yes, I owe a lot to all the seniors. I owe a lot to a lot of seniors, and I owe a lot to Kawhi. And also, um, Coach Al has been a good thing for me. He's been helping me on my shooting. Uh, Dave Velasquez also helped me out about improving my game, too. Uh, it, it was great knowing that James got out that slump because uh, I always tell James he always worry about his shot, but I tell him it's not really about what it is about right now. We need to win right now, but I need you for March. March is the biggest month. So when he's out that slump close to March, is always a good thing. And Xavier, he's, he's, he did his job yesterday. He did a real good job. He very rarely turned the ball over. He shot the ball real well, and he showed the mid-range pull-up that we always see in practice. Uh, I don't know. They're re they're a real good team. They're a real good team. They defend real well. Um, they're they're they'll step up and take a charge too. Cause I I got in foul trouble real early by them taking charges. So we just have to make sure we stay under control and make sure we beat them on the boards and make sure we defend their three. Cause they're a great shooting team. They like to spread the floor out just like us. Um, it's not really stress right now because we can't really worry about that. We got to get through these first wins first. We got to get through Boise State first before we start worrying about seedings. And we got to get through TCU. So without, if we lose these two games as Boise State and TCU, then we, we seeding doesn't mean anything to us right now. So we got to make sure we take Gary one game at a time. Anything else for Jamal? I would say this about Jamal that I've said to you without him being here is – no player has worked harder on his own individual skill development. From the time he walked in the door as a freshman, he revamped his jump shot to where he is right now. So the one question about his free throw shooting, that's work. That's him working. That's him changing things about how he shot the ball when he came in as a freshman when he was filmed and saw that he had flaws in his mechanics. And he worked diligently to get the proper form and technique. And if you watch him now, if you watch him, especially at the free throw line, the routine that he has, it's impeccable. And it doesn't vary. And that's why he knows when he goes to the line, like now, everybody in the building that he's going to make those free throws. And that, he's done that with multiple parts of his game, and that's what's allowed him to grow his game, and that's what has allowed our team to grow this season. He's been such a huge part of it, and everybody knows that. Anything else for Jamal? Okay, but thank you. Any any questions that you'd like from me? Is there something technical that Chase Tapley has changed or anything to uh, account for his shooting discredit or slump, I guess, for lack of a better term? I don't think that anything that uh, that Chase has done with you know the way he's shooting the ball. Uh, I think like anything else, when you miss a few, then those shots that were almost automatic before become a little problematic. Uh, had some good looks uh, Saturday night uh, from three-pointers to little runners that he had been making. That being said, they also have done what we all do. Okay, who's the number one guy on our scout board? Okay, Tapley, how are we going to defend him on the three? So they've given him less looks he's having a harder time getting open looks. He has to work harder to get those looks. But obviously, he's had good looks, and uh, he didn't shoot it very well uh, Saturday. And when you look at uh, the second half of the conference season compared to the first half when he was shooting 50% from three-point range, he's not shot that way. But maybe he was shooting a little better than he should have been shooting, and now maybe he's not quite where he Hopefully, we'll be starting on Wednesday. Coach, you heard Jamal talk about working against Kawhi last year really helped him. Did you notice that, that maybe that effect of guarding Kawhi has helped Jamal tremendously for this season? 
Honestly, no. No. And I, I mean, it's nice to say, and I know Kawhi, who was at the game on Saturday, would be flattered to hear that. Obviously, you learn tricks of the trade when you go against a guy that's that good. And the number one trick that, uh, that he learned was pursue the ball, pursue the ball, go after the ball. Every shot that went up, Kawhi said, it ain't going in, I'm going to get it. And Jamal has become pretty good at that part of it. He just goes and gets the ball. And that's sometimes what you have to be able to do. Jamal's playing real well. Chase is having problems. When's the last time this year that you had everyone on the team really playing well and being in a group? I'm not sure. Uh, rarely do you have everybody looking at your stats, shooting 50% or better. Uh, but we've had... I tell you, where we've had them all playing well is at the defensive end, and that's why we've been in every game even when we haven't shot the ball well. Uh, and I, I do believe that early in the season when Chase was shooting the ball so well, I talked about how much more reliable he had become with his defense. He is that way today. He and James Rahan are two, quote, scorers from the perimeter have become very, very efficient, effective, on-ball defenders, chasing guys. And that can wear on you a little bit, too, when you move from the defensive end to the offensive end. Uh, but I'm hoping that we will play well enough collectively to get a win on Wednesday and then another one on Saturday. It seems it's work that helped Jamal improve his free throw. Is it also work that has helped James and Chase get better as a defensive end? I'm sorry? Is it also work like Jamal they have absolutely they have they have taken more pride and ownership and not getting stuck on screens and we talk about that all the time we talked last year about how if we were in a paintball contest dj gay would never be hit that that paintball is like a screener the screener's covered with paint. DJ be the one guy that never got paint on him. Don't get hit. Don't get stuck. Don't don't let it, don't. And if you get hit, spin off of it where you don't get full body stuck. And they've all done a much better job of that, especially Chase and James. Coach, uh, you, you heard Jamal also say that you talked to him. He said you talked to him at the end of the season, saying you, you would need a lot more out of him. Is, is that part true? Did you talk have a conversation with Jamal last season about what he needed this year? I did. But I talked to all of them about here, here are things that I think you do well. This is in April. Here are areas that I feel that if you can help yourself grow your game, you will not only help yourself, but you'll help our team. And we, we talk at length about that. And then uh, I believe it was right before conference play. I had all of them. I said, like a time capsule, I want you to write down three specific things, just three, that you want to see happen for you in the conference season. And I said, I will look at them after the season and see what you say and then see what our season says. So I'm anxious to see what some of those guys put in there, including Jamal. Uh, probably not. I, I probably would not have thought that he would be quite as stat-filled with the, what he's done. Uh, but he is. And with Jamal, and it's been well documented, sometimes he's done things where you said, what's he doing? And sometimes you stand up and cheer when he finished doing what he does. Uh, so he's gotten better, still got groomed to grow, which is also good. Uh, the, one of the best things about Jamal is that he is fearless. He, is, he, he really does. That last play is gone. If he shoots an air ball and he's got a good look the next time down, he knows it's going in. 
he would never ever hesitate not to shoot it. So he's he's got a, a mentality that you that you win with, and he's unafraid. Unafraid. He's not afraid to fail. Not afraid to make a mistake. And and when he makes a mistake, he jumps back up and says, "That's the last time I'm gonna make that mistake." He works. It's one thing you must say about him. He competes. He competes very, very hard. And he's worked. We've continued to work on competing as hard mentally as he does physically. And when those come close to meshing, he's uh, pretty electric out there in the right sort of way. Uh, I don't know that we ever really said, okay, here's the goal. We're going to win the conference. Uh, but we wanted to make sure that uh, every player in that locker room knew that we had players good enough to win. Now, win, what does that mean? Uh, but we had players that were good enough to look an opponent in the eye every time we walked out of, out on the court and say, we're good enough to win. And then play as hard as you can. And if you truly are good enough to win, then, another, then it, it will usually take care of itself. But we did not have a board up say, these are, these are our three goals for the season. We didn't in terms of winning and losing. And, and looking forward to this next week, um, seating still need to be determined. How how much do you use the seedings as a motivation to help these guys win? How important is it to win in order to get that number one seeding? Tim Shelton, I, I didn't hear him say it, but I read it uh, where he they ask about uh, you know having his where where he's going to hang his jersey. And he said, "I hope right next to a ring." So they all want to win a ring. And in order to do that, we've got to, we need to win two games. And if we win two games, doesn't matter what the seeding is. We're going to be pretty good. Uh, so we want to win. A week ago when you were two games back, did you think, I mean, what, do you think there's still a possibility to win the regular season title? I try not to get caught up in it, but if I'm on a truth serum, I would probably have said the way New Mexico had been playing, that it would be hard for them to envision, to, to envision them losing back-to-back -back games. And yet... With what we do, it's not really truly hard to imagine any of us losing two straight games. This is this is basketball, and these are teams that are all capable. and And you better play well, you better shoot well, you better get a lucky bounce, you better stay out of foul trouble, you better be injury free, and on and on and on. Or things happen. There are a lot of lot of schools and a lot of teams that, with four games to go have a one-two game lead and wind up not winning their conference championship. So uh, we, we had good fortune that was helped created by others. But we had to win two games to be sitting in a three-way tie for first now. And we're going to have to win two games to be in a, at least a tie for first uh, come next Saturday. I've never played uh, at, in Boise. I've never been to Boise. Uh, I've watched tape. Vegas got good fortune and, w and won in overtime when they went there. Uh, we got lucky and uh, escaped a wide open three that would have won then the game then where they were here. I'm sure they will be talking about that. We get the privilege of having back-to-back -back senior days on the road. We'll play Boise on their last home game for their senior day and we'll play TCU on their last home game for their senior day. And you know what that's like by being here. These are, these are games where it doesn't matter who you play, you are extra charged and motivated. So we will have to be at our best on both of those games. Uh, Boise is a good team. And Jamal talked about they'll spread the floor, they'll drive and kick. Uh, uh, they, uh, they're, they're good. They're very capable. 
and they've had some close, close losses and some real close victories.